Father, teach us again in the name of Jesus. Open our eyes to those things we need to know about prayer in the name of Jesus. Uh, when the Bible says that and God hears their prayers, anytime you hear the word God heard their prayers, it means they got a response. Are you there? Until God hears your prayer, you may never get a response. And for, get, uh, for God to hear your prayers, you must pray in faith. So any prayer you make outside of faith will not produce a response from God. Are you there? Faithlessness fits off your prayer before God. Faithlessness makes your prayer fade before God. Are you there? But faith makes your prayer visible before God. Unbelief destroys the powers of your prayers, but faith empowers your prayers to reach out to God. What takes your prayers to God is faith, and what hides your prayers from God is your unbelief. So it is better not to pray at all than to pray without faith. So when ye pray, believe that ye will receive. Your believing is very important. Otherwise, the exercise of prayer will be void. Praise God. Now Luke 2, 37. And she was a widow of about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. Now, from here we know that one of the reasons for which we fast and pray is also for service. Fasting and prayer is not only a way to get your needs met. Fasting and prayer is also a way of rendering service unto God. How do we use, you know, how do we render service to God by fasting and prayer? Very simple. If God directs a person to you, if God brings the name of a person to you and God asks you to fast and pray for them, that kind of prayer is a service unto God. If you are interceding for certain people and you go on fasting and prayer for them on their behalf, that kind of fasting and prayer is a service unto God. So fasting and prayer is not only to meet your needs, it is also a way to render service. So as you fast and pray, you must also be wise enough to render service with your fasting and prayers. Don't channel everything to yourself again, alone. Don't, don't, don't focus everything on, on you, on you alone. You must also be, be selfless with your prayers. Luke 5.33 and they said unto him, Why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers, and likewise the disciples of the Pharisees, but dine, eat, and drink? Now from here, what I just want us to pick from here is that um, one of the signs of a true disciple is prayers. You are not a disciple of Jesus if you are not a prayer person. Because even Jesus prayed. So, a, and a true disciple is supposed to follow the footsteps of the, of, of the master. So, if our master, which is Jesus, prayed, you have no excuse to pray. Prayer is not a sign of weakness. Prayer is a sign of strength. Only strong men pray in this kingdom. So, if you are not a praying person, it means you are fainting, you are weak, you lack strength. Are you there? Men ought always to do what? To pray. Luke 6, 12 And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayers to God. That was Jesus. Jesus went to a mountain to pray and the Bible says he continued all night. Meaning he prayed all through the night without sleeping. He gave his sleep to God as a sacrifice. That's the man of prayer. <laughs> you will not know what it means to pray all night until you try it. <laughs> you will discover it will get to a point that your eyes will begin to battle with sleep. It takes sacrifice to pray. That's why I said earlier that prayer is not for the weak, it's for the strong. 
So one of the signs to show that you have strength in God is that you are still praying. May you receive grace to be a prayer warrior. In the name of Jesus. Luke 19.46 Saying unto them, It is written, My house is the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. I have explained that in the previous uh, uh, part. Luke 20.47 Okay, we have explained that too. Luke 22.45 And when he rose up from prayer, and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping or sorrow. Praise the Lord. Now, Jesus, the Bible here was referring to Jesus. Jesus rose up to check his disciples and he saw that they were sleeping. Now, why was Jesus praying? Why did he take his disciples along? He, he took them along to, in order to show them the ways of prayers. He was leading by example. Jesus knew they, they will have reasons to pray when he, when he, when he leaves. So, he, he, he was now trying to show them the, the, the technology of prayer. A true master must, must be able to teach his followers the ways of prayer. If you are not praying, you are dying. If you are not praying, you are fainting. If you are not praying, you are weak. If you are not praying, your life will soon end. There is no hope for a man that is prayerless. Prayerlessness is powerlessness. Prayerlessness is tantamount to hopelessness. So, to have hope, you need to pray. To be hopeful, you, you will need to be prayerful. To be hopeful, you will need to be prayerful. All these continued with one accord in prayer and uh, supplication. That is Acts 1.14. All these continued with one accord in prayers and supplication with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Now, they continued with one accord. That's the point there. They continued with one accord in prayers and supplication. Now, when you pray with a group of people, when you are praying in group, you are expected to pray in unity. It's important as a group you pray in unity. Otherwise, uh, you may not get a response. But if you are praying alone, do you still need unity? Yes. You need to pray in unity. Unity of what? The spirit soul, and the body. You should not be praying and yet your mind is thinking of any other thing. No. When you are praying, every part of your body should be praying. You should not be praying and still be thinking of something outside the prayer you are praying. You are praying to God for forgiveness and you are still thinking of what to do, what to do, how to... No, no, no. When you are praying, they, there must be unity of the being. Your body is praying, your soul is praying, your spirit is praying. When this happens, then you will get a response from God. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Father, Teach us again. Open our eyes to what we need to know on prayer. In the name of Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter two, uh, chapter one, verse eleven. Ye also helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. Now, this place is still pointing to the need for, you know, for intercessory prayers. So, occasionally you will see the apostles of hold, especially Apostle Paul, asking the church to pray for him. He will assure them of his prayer. At the same time, he will also convert their prayers. Are you there? So, that you are praying for others does not mean you don't need the prayers of others. Praying for people does not make you more than them. It is a privilege to pray for others. So, that you are praying for others does not mean you are now more than them. It does not mean you are now above them. No, it's a privilege to pray for others. Are you there? 
that's what we must understand if we know this then we will know that uh, the same way we can pray for others others can also pray for us because nobody is above prayer second corinthians chapter 9 verse 14 and by their prayer for you which long after you for the exceeding grace of god in you that means this shows that if you and you know if you are being prayed for the prayer of others for you can make you enjoy certain grace in god there are certain people that are you know that are enjoying certain special graces in god because of certain people who are consistent in praying for them there are a lot of ministries that are standing today because certain people have committed themselves to interceding for the ministry are you there anything you don't pray for cannot